So last time I was here in Akarula with Doug, I got to fly a really cool aeroplane, a 1956 Oster. I didn't think that it would be here this time because I thought it was down for maintenance, but we walked into the hangar, we pulled out the 207, and here it is. So this will be a bit shorter video because I don't know heaps about the Oster, but I'm gonna tell you everything that I know. So here we've got a 1956 Oster powered by a Gypsy Major. Stay tuned and we're gonna have a close look at this beautiful vintage airplane. So up the front here, we've got a wooden propeller with brass tips, and then it's coated with some sort of epoxy over the top of it to protect the leading edges of this propeller. So in this 1956 Oster is a 130 horsepower Gypsy Major engine. These engines were made famous by the fact that they were in the Tiger Moth, which is one of the more famous biplanes. But this engine here, it's really unusual in that the crankshaft and crankcase are at the top. You can see the propeller here is bolted onto the top of the engine on the crankshaft, and then below that is the cylinders. And you can see that because the spark plugs are down the bottom here, four cylinders underneath the crankcase. So every time you pre-flight this aircraft, you have to pull this panel off so that you can pre-flight the engine, have a look, make sure everything's okay. It's six screws every time you wanna pull it off. So it's not an easy airplane to just jump in and fly. So these engines are unusual compared to what we normally know from Lycoming and Continental in that because they're upside down, they have an external oil tank, which is just here. And then there's an oil pump that pumps that oil up into the back of the crankcase and then circulates it in through the cylinders and through the heads. So check out these big four smokes stacks down the bottom here. I call them smokestacks because you get this big cloud when it starts up. And what's interesting is when you fly this aircraft, because it's got these exposed exhausts like this, the fumes get sucked straight up into the cabin, particularly when you're at idle. So you can smell that it's a vintage aeroplane. A lot of them came with an extended muffler, which I believe actually makes it a lot nicer. You can't smell those exhaust fumes in the cabin and it makes it a little bit quieter. But I do love when this one starts up because it goes chunk, 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 chunk. It sounds like a vintage aeroplane, which is what it is. Here, of course, is the filler for that oil tank that we had a look at on the other side. It takes three gallons of oil, most of which drips out onto the ground. So I love these aeroplanes, and a lot of people do love these aeroplanes because of their steel frame. They feel really so... Ooh, that's a big spider. So I was gonna tell you about the steel frame, but I don't wanna get near that spider because that's a redback, a, one of those deadly spiders that you hear in Australia. If you get bit, you die. That's one of them. So steel frame all steel frame. People love these because they feel really safe in them. With that steel frame, if you have an accident, of course, you're going to be a little bit more protected. Although 1946, 1956, they weren't really renowned for their safety. I'm not sure I'd really want to have an accident in one of these. Now these aircraft were developed from the Taylorcraft J1 and they were originally created as an observation aeroplane. Now you can see this big glass canopy at the back here, that's so an observer could sit in the back and they'd fly over the battlefields and watch things like troop movements and train movements and let everybody know what was happening on the ground. So the empty weight of this aeroplane is 1,480 pounds and the gross weight is 2,200. So that means with full fuel, you can take 600 pounds in the cabin. Something I love about these aeroplanes is the fact that they're what they call rag and tube. So you've got that steel frame and then over the fuselage and over the wings, all fabric. And the other cool thing about it is they're super easy to maneuver on the ground. Check this out. Something else that's cool about this little Oster is it's got spring gear. Now that's a blessing and a curse. It makes it a little harder to land. Even for experienced pilots, you've got to be really good at energy management. If you land with any excess speed, that gear is going to pop you straight back up in the air. And that's because although they're quite easy to fly, they can be a little difficult to land. It's very easy to ground loop them. So even the most experienced pilot can feel like a newbie. What's kind of cool is you can see the pitot-static system, the tubes that feed into the instrument panel, and it's actually picking up static pressure from out here as well. Pretty common on these older aeroplanes, we have a vernier which uses air pressure to drive the gyros in the instrument panel. So here we are in the cockpit of Kilo Charlie Juliet. This is the 1956 Oster. It's pretty Spartan in here, but uh, it feels so vintage. I just love it. All the instruments feel like they come straight out of the 40s. So here we've got our flat lever, super old school, but I love it. Check this out. We pull that guy out, down come the flaps, and it stays right here. So you're never gonna forget to retract your flaps before getting out of the airplane. 
Okay, here we've got a little dongle, and what I want you to do is comment down below for what you think this is. Wrong answers only. Okay, let's talk about flight control. So you got this little stick here, full deflection right down between your legs, and then full deflection this way, almost hitting the instrument panel, and then both ways for your ailerons. And then to steer the aircraft, down here you've got some rudder pedals, and of course they only operate the rudder at the back, and then on the floor here, you can't, you might be able to see them there, are heel brakes. So you use your heel brakes for differential braking for steering. So up here you've got this beautiful old compass. This is what they used to use between the First and Second World Wars. And it reads really nicely, but it takes some getting used to because you're reading it upside down. You're reading it through the mirror onto the lens up here, which tells you, tells you where you're going. And of course, being an aeroplane, this Oster J1N has trim, but it's up here and it's operated by this really nice, now I happen to know that that handle is from a Volkswagen Beetle and this is how you operate the trim. So this aeroplane does have a couple of modern touches, Doug's modernized it so that he's actually got some radios in here. So we've got a full radio panel and then we've also got a UHF so that he can communicate with everybody on the ground at Arcarola. So once you're in here, it's not super roomy. I am a bit tight in the shoulders, but something I love about it is these sliding windows, they are super cool. Now I've even heard some stories, again, some research on the internet of one ex-TWA captain who used to demonstrate slow flight in one of these with full flat down at 23 knots, which is pretty close to walking pace. So check this out, I'm sitting in the back seat. It's pretty comfortable. I've got a little bit of headroom above my head here and I've actually flown like this. When we came up here last time, Doug and Ash were in the front and I sat in the back and it's, it's pretty comfortable. It felt a little bit sketchy as we were taxiing out with this slow revving engine. I thought, mm, are we gonna be able to do this? But yeah, absolutely. Full fuel, 600 pounds. I can sit in the back without it being too after CFG. It's a really usable airplane. So there you have it. That's the 1956 Oster Kilo Charlie Juliet up here at Arcarola. If you've flown an Oster or you love them or you hate them, tell us, leave a comment down below. I'd love to start a conversation about these Osters. I love coming up to Arcarola and I love chatting to Doug and I'm a little bit jealous of Doug because he's got four airplanes in his collection. He's got this 172 and then behind me there, he's got this RV6 as well. So he's got a selection of really cool airplanes to fly.